Welcome to the DSS Stories podcast. Um, my name is Ivana, and today I have a wonderful bunch of people, our DSS storytellers here, to talk to me about their aspirations and inspirations, seeing what kind of journeys you have undertaken until now, and maybe also learning more what you're going to do in the future. Uh, but let's start with a, maybe a short intro. So I would like to hear where you're coming from, uh, what you studied, and um, then we'll move from there. Okay. The ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> so polite, this guy. <laughs> okay, my name is Beatriz. I'm from Mexico, and I study communication. And my master's degree is in marketing. And three things that I really love is tacos, beer, and my family. <laughs> and that's a great combo. <laughs> <laughs> you can go. And my name is Ali, and I'm from Iran. Uh, I studied English at university, and I've been a teacher for a couple of years. And I love my job because every day I communicate with many mm -hmm. people. And there is a kind of interaction between me and my student. And in terms of my hobbies, music is my cup of tea. Whenever I'm happy, whenever I'm angry, you no know, music can act as a kind of healing for me. Lovely. That's yeah. all about me. Lovely. Well, thank you for your introductions. Yeah. And I think when we talk about dreams and, and aspirations, I would love to maybe go way back mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. we were all kids. I think uh, we all dreamt of becoming someone, uh, maybe an astronaut, maybe a um, soldier, maybe an explorer. So who did you want to be when you were kids? I think it will sound common, but I want to be a, a ballet ballerina. Oh. Uh, I started studying ballet when I was four, and I leave it when I was 14 because it started being just kind of heavy with my studies and everything like that. And I leave it, but I I love it. So if I see it, or maybe when I saw when I see some people with kind of movement movements and everything, it's like, hey, she's a ballerina, <laughs> or she she knows how to dance because you can recognize that kind of of movements. And also, I have never tried it, but I always love it. Uh, ice skating. I have oh. never tried it, but I really love it to see on TV shows. So that was the kind. I remember at once I dreamed I was a ballet bailarina on ice uh, sky oh, skating. Wow. So it was like kind of crazy, but that was my ideal profession when I was a kid. Very artistic <laughs> yeah. and very beautiful, I think. Yeah, I um, think. And I wear pants all the time, so it's like I I really like the skirts and mm. all the costumes and everything they, they wear. Um, I'm not so into that, but I really like how it looks on, on other people. So maybe that was part of the dream. <laughs> Do you still watch ice skating right now? When I have the opportunity, it's not that I look for it, but mm -hmm. if I find it on sapping or something like that, yeah. Or maybe in YouTube, it, sometimes it appears, like pop up a video about it. Yeah, I, I of course, uh, like to see it when I'm drinking a beer and eating tacos. So it's not, it's a perfect match. <laughs> yeah, thinking of becoming a ballerina <laughs> yeah. when having a taco in your head. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you want to become an uh, artist as well when you were a kid? No, you know, uh, considering my context in Iran, most of the parents, you know, push their children to be a doctor mm. because it is a profitable job, money-making job. But uh, when I was a child, I remember that I wasn't cut out for this job because I wasn't good at biology or other stuff. But I like to be a musician. You know, there is a special uh, musical instrument in my country, Kamanche. Mm. It is like violin. You know, violin is the Western you know, type, and it is really sad, you know, this type of music. I like it, but uh, I changed my way, and I studied English, but uh, maybe this is one of my dreams, childhood dreams, you know, to be a musician. Maybe you can still pursue it right now. Yeah, <laughs> it is never too late to learn. That is very true, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can definitely re re relate to my parents really wanted me to be someone, my, my grandma really wanted me to become a diplomat when I was a kid. Well, a kid, when I was like 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. She was like, you're great talking to people. You're great managing like connections. You should go to like an academy mm -hmm. for diplomats or be a journalist somewhere where you can talk to people and uh, interact with them. It 
didn't turn out to be this way. <laughs> uh, but right now, I'm still also working with people in different contexts. And um, I think there was something about my grandma's words that always stuck with me, yeah. um, mm -hmm. that even though my path changed, it still reflects her opinion and of me being the social person. Mm -hmm. So hearing your stories, I would like to hear how did it turn out to be that you switched from your dreams from becoming a ballerina <laughs> or um, a musician to where you are right now? Mm, for me, it was, uh, I remember at the beginning of the program, the, um, they asked for a song and I choose one called Keep Moving. So it's a phrase that I always had on my head. Like maybe um, I'm not a, baller, a valid ballerina, but I'm trying to make some movements with the work that I do and trying to pull the strings in a different way, just to trying to get the message to the people. And uh, right now that Ali said, it's never too late to learn. Uh, at the beginning, I started thinking, uh, before coming here, it's like, I'm 37. I felt kind of old to be here on the program. But now it's like, okay, it's another road that I I have the opportunity to, to take. And right now is just to becoming a, a storyteller in this project is the way to pull the strings and move, uh, to try to get a difficult message, to try to, to people understand the difficulties that parents are having with uh, uh, kids yeah when which they is are, yeah. the core of your that, project right uh, exactly so at the beginning it was like what I'm doing in this project I don't have idea of this but now it's trying to discover the skills you have and how DSS make you to discover the other skill that you don't have a, you didn't have idea you have it for example for me the design thinking it's one of the things that I have now on my mind. I have already found a, a course <laughs> and I'm oh, taking it also because it's something that I want to improve. So I think is this just keep moving. If a, a valid ballerina sometimes felt she has to wake up and the show must continue. So for mm -hmm. me, it's the same way to take it in another, in another road. So taking the mindset that you mm -hmm. had when it comes to the profession of being a yeah. ballerina and just applying it in a different context. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. How about you, Ali? Uh, you know, if I want to talk about myself, uh, in Iran, a student, you know, are bombarded with lots of homework and they do not have any time. In, in, I'm talking about my generation. Uh, I remember that I didn't have lots of time to enroll in music class. And also, uh, this type of instrument, I remember, that was really expensive. It cost me an arm and a leg, you know, to buy one of them mm. and start learning. Maybe it is like piano. If you want to start and if you like, you should have lots of money. And sometimes, you know, not having money has an effect, you know, on your future. But I have to say I'm still in touch with music, especially Kamanche. And while I'm studying and while I'm learning all the time, I listen to this type of music. And what inspired you to become a teacher? Uh, being with people, because, you know, as a musician, you know, you can convey your message by making something, by composing something. But at that time, I wasn't able to do this. And right now, as a teacher, uh, in addition to being a teacher and teach them English, sometimes I can teach them essential skills related to 21st century, like communication skills, yeah. soft skills. Yeah, I can convey my message nice. with teaching. Yeah, yeah. So also maybe kind of compensating what you were missing a little bit yeah. while you were studying with the knowledge that you are sharing with them yourself. Yeah. Nice. So you already mentioned a little bit your inspiration of what drove you to where you are right now. Um, how, what motivated you to join DSS, like both of you? I would be curious to hear. Mm, for me, it was the experience for coming here to Europe for the first time. And also I have the opportunity and the support of my family and friends, like, you should do it. And uh, that was the first step. And the second was just uh, hearing about another people who already have been here and the experience they have here. So it's just like a big step for me to trying to improve in my career and trying to get, uh, to reach, sorry, the objective that I have on mind just to 
uh, I have already become like a freelancer. I'm also I was also a teacher in uh, in Mexico. But so many teachers. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Coming from a family of teachers, this is perfect environment. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's like I really like to be a teacher, but also I I prefer to be a freelancer. I have done that a few years ago, and just to have new skills. And for me, it's the, the goal that I want to have. So it was to. Uh, to things like coming here for first time for me and just to learn new skills and to what I uh, said uh, to have a new idea how to make things uh, in a different way. I'm curious where it takes you in the future then. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> about you, Ali? You know, when I was uh, surfing DSS website, I came across multidisciplinary and I think this is the key element here. And, uh, you know, when you live in your own country, it doesn't matter if you are in the United States or Iran or other countries. All the time you think that, you know, my country is the best. But when you travel across the world, you realize that, you know, your country has its own problem and maybe strengths. And I'm here just to be a part of, you know, a group from all around the world. And it really helps me to broaden my horizons in order to reduce my bias hmm. and be a member of group. Maybe some of them are better than me, and this helps me. You know, it gives me a competitive edge being mm -hmm. with other people yeah. and help me, you know, to uh, not fall behind. Mm -hmm. For example, in my own team, some guy is you no know, good at computer, some guy is good at, you know, public speaking. So this helped me, give me confidence yeah. to be with other people who are better than you. And just continuously improving all the skills and ourselves on this journey. Yeah. <laughs> and if I ask you to just share with our listeners mm -hmm. or uh, our audience some inspiration tips, like what they could use um, for their motivation, is there anything that you could share? For me, I I really a fan podcast, so I always find the answer on a podcast. I don't know why. Like I am trying to find a new ways to cook, and I find an answer on podcast or a new way to um, to meditate, for example. And I think yeah, we were talking about that before coming here. Like uh, suddenly everybody started listening podcasts on the pandemic, and now I think it's a saturation about that. But you can find really good uh, podcasts in your own language or in another language. So the first tip is trying to find a, the answer on a podcast. And the second one is like uh, sometimes you are walking on, and times you are really relaxed. You have like uh, suddenly keep words just pop on your mind. Try to write it mm. and to pay attention because that's the way that great ideas become on great reality. I'm going to use that one. I <laughs> suck at writing things down. Uh, so I'm going to use that one myself. Yeah. <laughs> and if I want to share what I have learned so far, you know, I'm talking to my audience, you know, uh, be a lifelong learner. Mm. Keep learning and learning process never ceases and never ends. Uh, you know, one thing that I can share. And the other one is that do not think that your ideas are silly. You know, mm. come up with idea and try to share them with other people. Maybe they can give you a helping hand and maybe they can help you to flourish. Everything seems silly at first, but if you work on it, you're going to make it true. Wonderful. I think this is a very nice note to end our podcast on. <laughs> Just uh, continue being lifelong learners and uh, do not think that your ideas are not worth just sounding them to, to the rest of the people, to the mm -hmm. rest of your friends or strangers even. So thank you so much for being here and thank talking you. to me. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again soon. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.